policemen, and you see uh, these are young activists, and you see they have been uh, this the brunette. So when there is uh, there is no peace in the country, it is very difficult for young people to participate and engage in this platform. The second other thing is here. For example, I have put this draw here. Uh, this is the government whereby this, there is this block. And these are young people, for example, a youth led organization. And you see, because there is no policies, the young people have been blocked from not seeing the light. So there is no uh, there is no legal framework which enable young people to participate or to engage uh, fully in their respective uh, government. And because uh, these are young activists, uh, young people who are trying to to shun away from uh, or to create a platform for youth engagement, they lack there is a dollar here. They lack funds to engage in terms of advocating for their own issues, and the government is not willing to support them. Lastly, the previous position that the PYU has at the level of the African Union and uh, the the new position of the African Employed and Youth, and uh, also what are the interaction between the national youth councils and uh, the NGOs? the NGOs, the youth association and movement, continental, whether it be continental, regional or national uh, youth associations and movement, and uh, what are the role that the African countries are playing into that? And uh, my questions about that is, the youth council have their own role that they are playing in the, at the national level, and uh, who are the who are going to be the facilitators for these issues in Africa? So, uh, what is the main role that the AU can play in order to fix it's things? Of failure. It's a failure of institution, the state failure, mm -hmm. and it's also a climate of despair. And ultimately, if we we're to talk about the demographic dividend, which we've heard mm -hmm. a lot about in the last few days. If this has to persist, we can't talk about a demographic dividend. We have to start talking about a demographic disaster because that's what's intended. Mm -hmm. So that's my story. Just before you, you go on this, I just want to take you guys through this. I need this populated, right? Um, how much forum, seminar, or conference? Oh, sorry. <laughs> my name is Nolita from South Africa. Yes, so we started off in. in, in in a setting very similar to this forum, where we were young people with ideas, but uh, most of the people who were there were alumni from different youth exchange programs, have been um, abroad and all of that. And so we had ideas, right? Just ideas which we vocalized at this forum, and then we decided that since we have a step in the door, we would love to then, you know, come out with concrete decisions. But not only just talk about it, but to, to actually have it happen where there are key stakeholders. So we identified in that forum who did we want to work with, right? And how can we tailor, make our idea to suit the needs of that particular organization and our needs as, as the group of people. So we didn't have a name at that point. And then we were given a platform to vocalize the so I think we just have to like this over. That's why it's too small for us to get it. So basically, we need to get it. So one idea is still here. Yeah, all right. So let's have this now. Good. We need to have guidelines so that we can define and measure, according to your indicator, to what extent this engagement is made. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I think uh, it's like we have been talking about the same thing. Uh, all of us we have been talking about almost the same thing because here someone else has written you out of the processes with AU decisions. So I right. think we're in the guideline and this point before we go to the next one. So based on what you said now, shouldn't we just all come up together and decide what meaningful guideline would be for us? So, 
and the scattered across Malawi and the so I think we have a potential to scale up in the whole continent if we get a from other countries and not only in the southern issues concerning the So in the new particular stories, what do you think can go up to national level, international level and international level? is to put in place the what do you think can make it like go up in your industry? How do you think? I don't know that you can do this. How do you think? What do you think? What the things that have worked so far that have made you recognize this country? What else do you think is that what I'm saying? Okay, so you start by saying. So we disappoint us as young people, either we want to strengthen the youth, the AU youth division, or we strengthen the youth division. So you come to give me one thing. We cannot strengthen the infrastructure of the people. We have to strengthen our own structure, which will be protected. The aim has this objective, which is not us. The objective of the division is another one. And you will not come and change the rules and regulations of the aim of the division to be what you want to do. That's why the necessity of putting in place an assembly, which will be the decision making. I think I think you're really talking about very good ideas. But we're talking about an assembly that doesn't exist right now. So it's actually part of the solution that we can propose. But we can't we can't a hundred percent assume that it's going to be the solution because it's not proven to be a solution. What if we're going to put it up and then it's going to be much you know to Taken as a tokenist, or a tokenist way of engaging the youth, you know, having said, okay, let's fly the youth in here, and then we are sitting here for five days, and then we go back with no solutions. So I agree with you that this can actually be one of the good solutions, but it's not yet proven. So I feel like, yes, we can take it as one, but also allow the, the momentum to drag around and discuss and see something else that can work. For example, the guidelines. We can actually do, yes, maybe we don't have a guidelines, so maybe let's have a guidelines that is going to work in the assembly. You know, see exactly. But we, I feel like we don't just have to take it as the only solution because it's not there and it's not being proven. Okay. Okay. I, I also I appreciate your, your suggestion about the assembly, but I'm very apprehensive of the guidelines being a product of an assembly that doesn't exist and being limited to just that assembly. What the guidelines should to effectively as to inform the way that we engage with young people across the strata. So for instance, there's the Specialized Technical Committee on Youth, and that's where the ministers of youth from all countries come together. We would want to see how these guidelines inform that STC that makes high-level decisions that has impact on all of our young people. Um, and the Youth Assembly might be limited, uh, or the guidelines might just be limited to the Youth Assembly, they're a product of the that's the I happen to be one of the members of the world. Um, the impact that the world has and the countries in the world. None of us, not even our youth, will be capable to say something that will come from the revolution that comes from an assembly. So, sorry, sorry, what we are saying is not that we don't want a youth assembly. Yes, we want a youth assembly. For what should they achieve? What is the goal? Where, what is the guideline? So, where are we now? We are poor. We want to be our best. What is our best? What do we want as our best? When we identify that, youth um, association and the council comes in and then they promote that for us. So what we are saying right now is we want to know what is the best for the youth. So we've mentioned four things. And I think we, we should join them. I think we should join them because they are very important. 
So she was a networking, understanding and research, many young people don't know. Um, an expression of ideas, mobilization, and charts. Networking, understanding, Expre expression, mobilization, and chance. So, so if we use that then as a theme of scaling, how do you think that can be put in a sentence or in like in one thing? Yeah, that's what I think. Because because these are very important things where you know, you've seen it working for you, and you can see that it has a potential to move forward. You've seen that forums of expression work, and even this what we are doing here is a forum of expression because we are expressing our ideas, and from these ideas we can. Part and talk about how can we make this at least the people depending on our interests, of course. So, for you, you've said that you are now part of um, alliances and many different parts. How do you think you can use that networking session to scale up the interest that you have for your country? So, what do you expect in general the building the so this and that's our group name okay guys that's our group name acronym is guys acronym is guys we're trying to we're trying to identify what are some of the gaps in the institution of the african union when it comes to engaging young people um some of the unexpected and surprising insights was that there is, is a general lack of coordination of youth-led and youth-serving organizations and initiatives institutionally within the African Union. Wow, surprise, gasp. <laughs> um, then, in terms of what did not work well and why, we've got a grocery list of things. So, we've discussed an issue of a youth indicator and that there's, there's a lack or a deficiency in terms of youth specific indicators to measure progress on youth development and youth engagement on the continent whether this is aligned to agenda 2063 or whether this is aligned to uh, the african new charter is still to be specified and still something that we're discussing but there's a general consensus that there's a lack of an indicator to measure um, participation and engagement when it comes to young people and the African Union. There's a lack of information between the African Union and member states and young people. Um, there is a lack of implementation of ratified youth charters in certain African countries. There's also the obvious one in terms of the lack of representation of youth division in countries for more engagements of young people and organizations within countries to allow partnerships with the government in, in the implementation of strategies. So we have general consensus that, that is um, an overriding concern in terms of what is not working well and why it's not working well. In terms of the themes and patterns that are cutting across the, the stories, um, there is a general nonchalant attitude towards engaging the youth in Africa. I don't know who wrote that. Who wrote that? General nonchalant. Tell us more. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Nah, no problem. Okay, so uh, it goes back to <laughs> so it goes back to everything that we were, we've written in the stories. So first, we're talking about access to information about the youth in DRC. <laughs> Poor access to information. There's generational gap. Intergenerational gap in the in communication, the youth exchange alumni forum. There's an issue with that. Women heading ourselves. There's no vocational training. So basically, when you look at all the story in the train, it just shows that nobody cares. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's initiative 
but there's initiative just to make no action, no implementation mm -hmm. to grassroots level. Okay, cool. Thank you. So, do we do we agree? Is that Very the consensus? Good point, Very good point. Nonchalant. <laughs> Nonchalant. Don't care, bro. Um, okay, so moving on. The institution. The institution, the institution that doesn't yeah. care about young people. Care, and you care. If we didn't care, we wouldn't be here. The, the institution doesn't care about pe young people, but it doesn't care about young people indeed. It, in, it cares about young people in words. The words are there, all the documents are there, the strategies are there, but the deeds, the implementation, doesn't indicate that there's care, that there's mm. a caring or level of care. Okay, in terms of what worked well and why it worked well, um, someone said the SDGs youth indicator leave no one behind. Who wants to speak about that? Anyone? Can you put that one up? SDG indication on youth. No? It has to be our. 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 Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, but uh, I want to say there's no specific uh, indicator concerning youth. Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, what concerns youth is uh, on the SDGs, yeah. youth, when you go, is, uh, I think it's transversal. Mm -hmm. In almost all the SDGs, you find at least one of the indicators or two mm -hmm. talking about issues concerning youth engagement and. Uh, 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 talking about the implementation process and how to get uh, them involved mm -hmm. in the whole process, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think there's no uh, specific uh, as you on young people. Yeah, there's no specific target to indicate on young people. Yeah. Young people are just mainstreamed across. That's the why it's Yeah, there we are. Um, yes. Successful, successful program. Jesus, whose handwriting is this? <laughs> Successful mini partnership in working groups, AU Commission. Okay, <laughs> not sure whose that was. Uh, what's working well, according to another person, is the AU Youth Division at the African Union Commission. And um, there's also this one, which was a bit debated at the start around the Youth Division and how well it is working in terms of working with youth led and youth serving and youth centered organizations. Um, so, for instance, I would say that in the past, the youth division has done well to engage young people around uh, the demographic dividend roadmap that was agreed to by heads of states in 2017. They did assist in couching member state interests through the specialized technical committee on health, population, and drug control um, to solicit buy-in for this agenda to be the overriding theme of the, of the AU for 2017. It's debatable as to whether this roadmap is being implemented and domesticated and taken seriously, but I think we have to we have to appreciate the fact that it's there and it's an instrument that we can use for our, act, our activism and advocacy. So we think that kind of works well. Um, what has potential to scale? Why be specific? So African youth exchange programs has potential to be scaled. Um, African Youth Assembly. Who spoke about the African Youth Assembly? Leonard. Uh, Leonard. Yeah. Yeah. Leonard. African Youth Assembly. Scalability. Potential. Great. Uh, I think uh, the issue here was to try to make uh, the EU and the member states understand that uh, Apart from having uh, national representations, which are national youth councils and many other uh, movements, we need another continental uh, representation, uh, another continental platform, which will help um, or enable the youth to express their view on uh, the decision-making uh, process uh, in uh, Africa and to collaborate as well between the states. Uh, the member, the member states, youth, and the EU. Are we clear? Do we have? We fine. Great. Moving along, potential um, scaling the youth envoy program to all member countries. The AU to pick youth envoy from all member states, and each envoy pick youth envoy across states within the country. Yes. Do you want to explain? Oh, further there. Yeah. Okay. Well, good work. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, um, potential in scalability is the fact that, again, there is this demographic dividend roadmap which we can talk about at the end. So, that's done. Are we all clear? Problem step one indicated. Are we happy? Do we have any comments, suggestions? 
abuse. <laughs> welcome to. I think it's better to take down the uh, mm -hmm. comments and solutions. I think it's better. Yeah. Yeah. Is that so enough? Great. Comment about it. One group. <coughs> okay. Uh, we're still the same group. Our names. Uh, our name is Gap in institutional things. <laughs> um, bottlenecks. Let's start there. All African youth face. Why did you tell first? That middle big block. Don't tell us what to do with our lives. <laughs> I'm a You're a facilitator. You're a timekeeper. <laughs> You're a silent partner. Okay, we should go with solutions first. Okay, so in terms of solutions, colleagues, one meeting. Hello. Hi, comrades. Thank you. Thank you. One meeting. Um, okay, so draw and describe the opportunity with potential to scale. So we identified that a youth engagement indicator is something that could be a potential opportunity but not a potential opportunity to scale just yet because we need to get the indicator first. Um, guidelines for meaningful youth engagement. Um, having African Union guidelines that can inform the way the African Union as an institution engages young people to be measured by an indicator. Um, the African Union Youth Initiative Communication. Initiatives, communication. Yeah. Do you want to say more on that? Okay. So, uh, so, so, to say one about it, you have to say one about everything. <laughs> okay. So, hello everyone. So, uh, the focus here is, we said we wanted to create something called Youth Engagement Champions. Now, to do this, we need to do all of this first. So, Youth Engagement Indicators, Guidelines for Meaningful Engagement, and then Youth initi Initiative Communication. So what this means is everything that the AU is currently doing that the youth don't know about, how do we get the champions that we are putting across countries to communicate it down to the grassroots level so that the people in the least clan back home knows what the AU has in plan for them. That's what this is about. So I'll let you do That's a great point. Is it good? Great. Yeah. Because, so because by next year, then you, then you can work all year into next year, so this is an annual thing, and then go to get into that year. I like that you're endorsing it. Let's, let's just do an Avery's risk for the next, and then open up for comments and suggestions. Um, so, bottlenecks. The obvious ones are that <coughs> there's a conflict between youth champions and youth councils. So national youth councils could view uh, the idea of having youth champions or youth envoys or youth task force yeah. in countries as opposition and not want to work with them and try to discredit them and delegitimize uh, their existence, which could be a future problem. Um, the other bottleneck is that all African youth face almost the same challenge. These include that are not limit to, limited to insufficient legislation, guiding programs, inadequate resources, paternalism, multi-sectoralism, political uncertainty as well as insufficient mentoring and evaluation. Who we'll speak more on that? Yeah. Bennett? Yeah. Yeah, the bottlenecks, you get quite the exhaustive list. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all, uh, we all face uh, almost the same problems in all uh, African countries with uh, the institutions and the uh, governments. And uh, when we talk about bottlenecks, which uh, don't really permit uh, young people to be part of the decision-making processes uh, or the implementations of the various agendas we have. Uh, we, first of all, identify the fact that young people, the, the, the other generation or the institutions or our states, they don't have confidence in their youth. They don't believe in their youth. And uh, that's one of the, 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 the things. The, the second one is that there is inadequate means, there are inadequate means for the youth to really excel or implement the ideas, the great ideas and the projects they have on the field. And uh, uh, thirdly, I think uh, there is uh, uh, a great issue of social marginalization uh, and uh, uh, inequality as well. When we talk of uh, inequality, you we go we will look at the uh, gender-based violence. Uh, gender-based violence is not only about it in the by brutalizing. Uh, you have verbal uh, uh, violations that you can do. Maybe you see a, a lady who is a leader of a civil society organization who is carrying on uh, 
a great project uh, to advocate maybe as you did over there or uh, yeah yeah and uh, somebody will say what can you want to do those are some of the things we appreciate uh, in the field and they really uh, not help uh, skill of uh, the, uh, the initiative or attending goals we really uh, uh, give ourselves that's it that was just that and i think uh, we will follow up see by uh, during uh, before uh, when we will be making our final uh, report for that it's so, okay. thank you Lionel, for your help and insight um so Lionel's really done well to unpack that. So those are bottlenecks. The barriers in terms of securing the youth assembly within this uh, mechanism is that there's a political process to procure the existence, and negotiate the existence of this youth assembly. And the barriers could potentially be present within the specialized technical committee on youth or any of the other specialized technical committees that exist within the African Union. Um, it could exist within the PRC. What does the PRC stand for again, people? PRC? Look it up, look it up. The PRC is there. Um, and then the heads of state some. So there's the political layers that have to solic be solicited in terms of buying into this idea of the Youth Assembly. And if consensus isn't reached at the STC, it's not going to progress to the PRC. It doesn't progress through the PRC, it's not going to be approved by the Heads of State Summit. And we don't necessarily have much control over that process. So that could be a potential barrier. Um, the risks to this strategy and to our solution is mainly these two. The fact that there's subsistency means administration and facilitation. So I think we had quite a robust discussion in our groups around if we have these youth engagement champions or these youth engagement task force, task forces in countries, um, we need to look at some level of incentivization, uh, be it monetary or be it exposure or other um, other means of incentivization, that could be a potential risk. I think Olomide, uh, Olomide, uh, Olomide mentioned some interesting points around how when you attach money to something, it kind of yeah. dilutes the, the enthusiasm yeah. because it becomes more of a competitive space as opposed to people doing things selflessly. Uh, the other colleague from, I think, Chad or Malu, um, indicated that also when you attach positions and titles to things, people don't necessarily take it as seriously as they would um, if it was voluntary. Yeah. So that's a risk. And the other risk is that the youth envoy has a two-year term, and the next envoy might not support the idea. So the current youth envoy only has two years, and um, we don't know who's going to be the next one in the next two years, and we don't know what their priorities might be in terms of their administration. So this may be well and good for the next 20 months, between now and 2021, but it might not necessarily garner support beyond them, and we need to be mind mindful and cognizant of those risks. Lastly, the enablers. What can help us get this done and get this process off the ground is we could have, uh, we could establish a working committee to develop the indicators on youth participation and the guidelines for youth participation for the African Union. So formulate a working group of experts to give technical input into what these guidelines and what this indicator would look like, mirrored by other existing instruments within the African Union and even within the, um, within the global environment when it comes to the SDGs, etc., etc. Um, the aim is, again, how do we engage Connectors. Okay, so there's the idea of identifying and building coalitions amongst three types of people. So we've identified connectors, maidens, and salespeople. So basically, these three types of individuals are differentiated by the fact that connectors are people that you engage 
if you want to increase your access and influence. So for instance, a connector is someone that you would engage if you would want to get a letter to Barack Obama. You don't have direct access to Obama, but someone that you know will know someone that knows someone to get your letter to Obama. So we need to identify potential connectors within our countries and within the region that we could bring in and build coalitions with. We also need to identify mavens. So mavens are those people that know a little bit about everything, people like Pearl. And these are technical experts that can assist us with regards to the working committee in developing these guidelines and developing these indicators. These are people that have expertise and experience that are relevant to our mandate and what we're trying to pursue. And then lastly, we have the salespeople, and that's quite self-explanatory. These are people that can sell you things. These are people who are convincing. These are people that can sell ice to Eskimos. Mm -hmm. And by building coalitions of these three types of individu individuals, um, we can find strategic opportunities or create strategic opportunities to solicit buy-in for this program. So that's our group, and that's what we've done. Thank you to Lionel and Olimide uh, for the chipping in and helping out doing the lifting. The group. Well, I want to thank, thank you, you for doing the brilliant presentation. Because we were centered around youth empowerment, because even though we faced challenges in what we were trying to do, we were resilient and we had the courage to move on with innovative ideas. So all of that together joined the first word is Nelson. So um, in the storytelling, the insights and um, unexpected things that happened was that we realized that there was a power in storytelling because we learned a lot from the stories that people had, how they made their projects successful, what could have been done better, and all of that. So um, also, we didn't know that we still have a colony in Africa, which is um, Western Sahara. And, and that they are under the colony of Morocco. So this was a very interesting insight and it had to inform every other decision that we were making as a group. Because our theme is centered around advocacy and youth advocacy. So I cannot go and advocate in Western Sahara. I need to understand the laws, you understand? Because it is an autocratic government. So I need to, so things like that, those are things that came up in the conversation. And um, we also understood that things work better when energy is put into good use and that um, mobilizing ourselves, creating alliances, projects, and organizations within ourselves um, really works well. And um, what did not work and why? There were financial losses in terms of the return on investments. So those members in our groups who had investments coming in and all that, there were many financial losses because they couldn't identify what it was that they were exactly doing, whether this thing was in relation with what the people needed on the ground or not. And there is a gap of information between different um, young people. So we also spoke about the intergenerational gap, but we also noticed that even us, between young people, there's a huge gap on information depending on where a country is in terms of development. We then also spoke about how difficult it is for young people to implement and um, do change projects because there's no budget or the budget is inadequate. So what worked well? <coughs> Messages were delivered to the right people. We did a needs analysis in our projects of who needed what in our communities. Um, yes, and... Um, Young people were trained in different things because we have one member in our group who says that his project was centered around training young people and capacitating them with skills. And um, research was done. So this is what makes projects um, successful, research, correct research, so that you can bring a product that the people can work with and relate to. And what was also very interesting and worked very well was the, res the resumption of important conversations that had not been had in decades. So in Western Sahara, there were conversations that were not had, conversations of freedom and all of that. But through her advocacy in that field, these conversations were had um, in decades. Um, yes, there was also another example of Algeria, where there were protests, big ones, where um, a dictatorship was overthrown. And um, 
It worked well because the actions that were implemented spoke directly to the people on the ground. So now the themes and patterns um, in our stories, as I've said and mentioned before, was that we were centered around engagement, the engagement of people, the advocacy of people. We were centered around um, assessing key issues, going back to the needs analysis, what is the problem in this particular society, and how do we bring it, um, how do we bring um, solutions we also noted that sometimes these projects are self-sponsoring because you get to um, rural areas where they do not have a budget to implement programs and you find young people mobilizing and self-sponsoring themselves in order to make these things successful. And um, a few hurdles were there and they were overcome and um, these projects then became a source of inspiration and motivation which means now that those people who looked at the people make these projects come to life, can now take that even for themselves and see that no, there is a possibility um, to advocate and to do all of this, which is really just the center of advocacy, to give people hope and to inspire change. Um, what else? Um, the initiatives really worked. They actually worked. And why did they actually work? It is because of teamwork. And then I move on. So we also had to speak about what has the potential to actually like scale up in, in, in our projects. So we said networking. So we, we said that we need to understand the conflicts that are happening within the continent. Then I go back to what I said earlier on that. In my understanding of what's happening in West Sahara, I can then discuss solutions that are suited for that environment. I cannot take a solution from South Africa and implement in West Sahara. I need to research. I need to understand the government. I need to understand the law that is, that is there. Because in some African countries, you, you get arrested for just having an opinion on Facebook. So that, those are the different contexts and perspectives that we needed to put into consideration. What else? Um, someone else said that, no, we, perhaps we need more forums that express these um, opinions and these emotions. Because currently, you will notice that most forums are there to identify problems. So we are saying that, yes, we continue to identify problems, and with every day that dawns, a new problem comes, and this pro problem needs a solution. So what we then said is that the problems that have been already identified need solutions. So forums should be more based on solutions as we are now, and um, instead of just identifying problems the whole time. What else? So we also saw that one of the main things um, that made these projects successful is because young people were being given a chance. Now, you do not just get a chance, you advocate in order to get that chance, which again is the theme of what we are doing. Advocacy and, and understanding the different branches and, and, and organs of advocacy. Um, yes, so um, mobilization also um, can be scaled up because it gives us access to those minority groups it gives us access to those people who, when we talk, we say they do not have access. So in mobilizing, we even mobilize for those particular people. I will then stop there, and my colleague will continue, and we will engage. So when we move to, do to talk about the uh, bottlenecks, we talked about the resistance to change. We young people are not trusted. Because in our communities, they are used to some traditional systems and they believe that those systems work well. Because they worked in the past, they believe that they will continue to work for the next generations. So they resist to the change. <coughs> and besides of that, this is actually how in um, the cultural context, going up to a political and uh, governmental context, there is bureaucracy. Okay, you have a brilliant idea. You want to implement it. You start drafting your project. Then you go to um, some sponsor or something. And he's like, can you get me this paper? You're okay. You go get the paper. You come back. No, not this one. The other one. You go get it. No, it needs to be signed by this person, not that person, that kind of things. So these are two very important elements that stop us. Bureaucracy and resistance to change. Um, these are actually the things that happen during the process. When the initiative is here, it is launched, and we are going uh, step by step, we face these two major problems. 
but there are more import important barriers that if they exist, you can't even not think about initiating something. We have the language and mobility barriers. For example, we all know that the languages we speak are not the official languages of our countries. I mean, maybe the RC and Rwanda both speak French, but they get, can't get together because in our daily life we express ourselves in our mother tongues and mother languages. So this can be a huge barrier to express our ideas and to work on a continental uh, level. And uh, uh, adding to that, mobility barriers. For example, for me, I have like free visa only on North Africa. I need to do a lot of papers, for example, to go to South Africa. How am I supposed to break the gap between um, top of the Sahara and the bottom of the Sahara? How can North Africa work with South Africa and I can move to there to learn from their experiences and to see? So this is a huge problem, language and mobility barriers. The second one is disinformation, non-mediatization, because of the lack of continental media. When we want to publish about the Algerian protests, uh, the Sudanese protests, we always refer to Al Jazeera. <laughs> Why don't we have, like, I don't know, African news, something that is trustable? So, first of all, we don't have the media who has the capacities to deliver our information and to deliver our information as it should be, because we face a lot of fake news when we uh, go to uh, our continental media. And the third thing is disinformation. A lot of people in this room didn't know about Western Sahara. Mm -hmm. We're here in the Pan-African Forum, yeah. like Africa, the continent. We're suggesting let's break the gap between North uh, Sahara, South Sahara, and that kind of things. And a lot of people don't know that a country exists. Mm -hmm. Western Sahara exists. Yes. This is not totally our fault. This they don't give us enough information. They limit us to a geography, geographical um, zone that they need us to know. In school, I learned about Algeria, North Africa, and then North Africa and Middle East. North Africa and the Mediterranean region. Like, I don't agree with Saudi people. Let me learn about Kenya, Ethiopia, I don't know. So, then adding to that, there is a lack of awareness. So, it goes a bit with disinformation that there are a lot of people who are informed but they're not aware of the impact of that thing. Then we move to misunderstanding of the system and processes. Yeah. It is said that if you want to change a system you need, you need to know a system and in our cases we don't need know our systems. A lot of people initiated revolutions in so many countries but then they face a constitution and they're like whoa how does this constitution work? They didn't know that they don't have the right to do this and to do that. And this is something that stopped us from the beginning. So after that, we draw, like literally draw, uh, and describe the opportunity with potential to scale. We started with networking. When we talk about networking, we said that the networking actually exists. Everybody has its network. And what happens in this kind of, when we give solutions in this kind of forums and conferences, we're there always like, yeah, we need to create a network and create a WhatsApp group and gather this. No, we already have our existing networks. So let's take them and move. Let's not lose time on networking. After that, we need to mobilize, we need to work on mobilization and expression. When we mobilize people, we don't come up with people and tell them, okay, so listen, this is this and that, we need to do this, not to do that. No, we need to express, we need to be inclusive, we need to find a common solution because it's a group work. After that, it's access. So a lot of people, if we take we, the uh, existing networking, a lot of people have access to information. Just let's take the example of the people who are present here. We have access to information. <coughs> Because if we didn't, we won't be here today. Mm. So when mobilizing people who know what is the, the right information to give, we can bring new people with us and include them. So we give them the access to the right information. And this, is, this will lead inevitably to change. 
but okay this is great the ideas everything let's do this but there are risks we talked about conflict and political okay. <laughs> instability yeah conflict and political instabilities in our country for example we want to do a project in let's say western africa but we can't include all the countries because we're not some laws in some countries doesn't permit us uh, and we have uh, a lot of conflict regions in the continent that will that will put our project project at risk adding to that organizations uh, sorry yeah advocate advocate uh, safety in autocratic countries so for example there is a person from western sahara and we started a project we're working on it everything is good and then that person is in danger and at that point you will be thinking should we save the person should we stop the program so these are the risks that the risks that we can face and that we should be aware about from the beginning and then we have not having enough funds yeah the major problem and we've been talking about it all the day is funding you may have a great idea but between us we need money <laughs> A lot of people say that money doesn't make you happy, but money makes projects, <laughs> honestly. And we need money to achieve all of this. And then organizations can use money. Yeah. Okay, so, and then, okay, let's get the money. Let's go to organizations. There is a high risk that that organization will use you <coughs> instead of helping you. I mean, when someone sponsors you, of course they are getting something. They don't give you money like that. Because if they give you money for free, so you are the product. And in many cases, some organizations make you the product. And this is a high risk that can stop the project from its beginning. Then we move to enables. So the government sh uh, should support and... Yeah. So... To make all of this work, we need that our government support our actions and that uh, we include private sectors when we are working. Because maybe it cannot work from the side of the government, but it can work from the side of private sectors. Then we need creative mobilization. When we say creative mobilization, don't tell someone, okay, let's do a project, let's change this country. No, you can't do that. Me you, need all to five. <laughs> <laughs> you need to give them something. For example, without about giving statistics. For example, you say in this country, um, they started with 10 people, then in 20 years they did that, there is 50% of this, because people trust numbers. We also talked about yeah, sharing good practices on uh, youth engagement, so through storytelling. Then we have um, yeah, including individual goals in a global goal. Mm -hmm. When you want to bring someone, you don't tell him, let's uh, make this organization to work on political change in the country. You tell them, okay, the major goal is the political change in the country. But if we get to this, you will be able to buy a house. The other one wants a scholarship. You're like, yeah, you will have enough skills to have a scholarship. You will be able to get married if you want to get married. So we should all the time do some kind of honest lobbying, <laughs> if I can say this. Um, so besides this, we also talk about engaging victims and survivors um, in the advocacy process. And here I take the example of uh, Rwanda. So they have this uh, major, um, uh, where they, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that major discussion where they include all the survivors from uh, the Tutsi uh, genocide. And this is an idea that we should bring into the table because uh, if you don't know what the other think, don't expect him to think what you think. You need to know him. And last, yeah, let me read this. Yeah. So when we design our um, uh, strategies, we need to include influencers. For example, um, Rukaya, who was here, when they did a, uh, an event in Senegal, they included artists. Uh, singers, uh, influencers on social media and everything to uh, um, get to a larger public. Yeah, and that's it.
en même base il y a Sina Sinoès, Rebecca, Dalabé, Ia, Zanzibar, Lydia, Kebede, Anana Hussein, et Nares, from Ghana. So, we have two steps of presentation. The first one will be presented by, by my fellow here from Ghana, Alice. Welcome. Good day, guys. My name is Iris. I'm from the Democratic Republic of Congo. We've been working in a group, as you said, with Sinat, Rebecca, Abdallah, Lydia, Anani, and me. Uh, we've been working in information and communication technology. So, um, yesterday we were being asked to develop a um, youth engagement platform. And then we came up with a great idea on how to reach one million African in the world, Africa. So, the first problem, uh, unexpected, surprising, uh, surprising insight that we found is that the youth engagement for union and educational institution, social media and affected group coming together, uh, it's a problem. It's difficult for the young people to come together. Um, they can come into organization or they can come into a uh, university, but being together somewhere, it's, um, it's difficult to have them together. And then educational institution um, brought country-wise change revolution and it brought down um, monarchy government. It's like in most of the countries, it is, um, it's like it's difficult to have freedom of expression. It's difficult for people to engage or uh, every engagement is seen like a revolution. Um, the other thing is the social media. Uh, it got to the world to listen and pay attention and help in various ways. Since we have all idea, different ideas for a certain problem and different solutions for different things. So in social media, we found everything. Uh, we found fake news, we find real news, we find important information, we find wrong information, but it's difficult for somebody who doesn't have access to the right information to know exactly which one is which one. We went to what did not work well. Okay, we have a poor mechanism of communication to the grassroots level. Access of communication, though the right tools for communication are not available, and we have the communication problems. Well, most people don't have access to internet, especially people in rural communities. It's difficult uh, for them to know that we are sitting here and then we're talking about this. And I even, I'm even sure, except Twitter, Facebook, and all of the social media, uh, when we will be back home, few of us only are going to talk to the community about what happened most of us will be oh i had a great time and then i tweet and i post a picture and then we just stop there what worked well uh experience uh, exper excuse me experience of each member state country inspired by others to go and see other countries challenge we'll give it the, the example of sudan what happened in sudan is uh we saw a lady we saw a picture going viral over the internet of a lady wearing white and she was talking to a group of people. We didn't really know what really happened before that. Maybe she was not really the, the lady who uh, did everything for Bashir to step down. But because she was a woman, because uh, she was in a car, uh, in front of a car talking, which in our country is difficult to see women raising their voice to talk to men and other people, that was a, a, a symbol of force. And we take it as an example for us to use, which is good for social media. But uh, the other part is education. Education, it's not that education is accessible to everyone. No, but education has been standardized. It means like ladies, young people, men, we can all go together and learn. We can all uh, go together and be trained. But, um, there's the team and the patterns across stories. Uh, when we talk about youth engagement, we see corruption, we see democracy, we see um, commitment, we see gender parity, we see conflict management. So bringing together um, all of these be between 
um, minority of people and majority of people, balancing is difficult. We, we try to brainstorm and to come up with an idea on how all the young people from all the 54 African states are going to come together and to work together. We have a small student union that goes down to discussion and decision on matters, which goes down or come down to social media notification, and then which come down to getting the world to listen. This is good. But in, a, in another way, to, according to our group, social media is not really effective. Internet is not really effective because before the internet, we um, information was um, um, I'm looking for the word information was was accessible to people. Ah, there were a, a way of talking, like they say, walk the talk or talk the talk. But I think word of mouth was the efficient, the only way that I would know this other country or this other village is burning or in this other town this. This is happening. We use gossiping today, but it's not really gossip, it's word of word to mark. So we chose um, the potential like communication channel that we can use. We went to word of mouth, as I said, it's the only effective way to get to spread the stories, to get to uh, to talk to people. If I tell him something, he's going to tell him, he's going to tell him, he's going to tell him, and everybody's going, is going to know. That's how it used to work back then in the village. And I'm sure it can still work today. Because up until today, people, most people don't have access to internet. Most people don't have access to TV. In most areas, radio are not working. In other places, um, uh, uh, print, print uh, like newspaper, magazine, or all of that, they don't have access. And most people don't know how to read or how to, to, to write. So you cannot use this kind of, of channel of communication. If really we want to reach all Africans, like most Africans, even this one million, but all Africans, we need to use a method of uh, communication that they can understand. Um, the other way is public assembly. We all go to church, we pray. Everyone, you got your own faith. So it be Muslim, it be Christian, it be uh, um, uh, Indian, all of them, they, they always sit in a public assembly to listen to a leader, to listen to somebody speaking to them. So we can use uh, uh, this way of talking to people, this way of revoking people, to talk to them and to tell them about what we would like them to know. There is... Um, also, two media, two social media that we thought are beneficial, it's Facebook and WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the new version of word to man because everything happening in your WhatsApp, you send to another person, you send to another group, and then that, that all the information is spreading. Facebook, everyone got Facebook, most of the people who, who got access to internet. They don't have Twitter, they don't have LinkedIn and all those other social media. But if you ask somebody about Facebook, everyone will tell you what is Facebook. And we thought about the youth platform. To reach one million people, the mathematics is simple. 20,000 young people per country. We got 54 uh, African states. If you multiply 54 by 20,000, it's one million. So um, we need to be part of the system to change it. As the lady said, I'm going to uh, uh, give uh, uh, my colleague to speak and to explain to you about the platform that we put together to reach the one million initiative. Thank you very much. Yeah, proceeding with us, the two. Um, First, we discussed about bottlenecks, although we got uh, difficult because bottlenecks and barriers are used similarly, they are synonymically used. But then, after the clarification of Madam, thank you, uh, we clarified bottlenecks as an internal uh, challenges and barriers as external challenges. So, in internal challenges, we said that resistance to change because there are some young people who are not ready to, to bring changes. They want to be as they are, they want things to be the same. And then we have a challenge of young people who are less informed because they, they do not access information. 
And then there's a challenge of communication. As you know, in Africa, we have different languages. We have French, Portuguese, English, Swahili, so Arabic countries. So uh, we, are, we are facing these challenges in communication. Uh, but then in terms of barriers as external challenges, we looked at uh, like military forces. You see, there's this, uh, the use of extra forces. When you want to just to, uh, to use the right of assembly, coming together, then you make it the challenge of extra forces. I think we have been experienced, we are in Africa, so we have, we have been experiencing such a challenge in our country. Then there is a, a challenge of manipulation of information, I mean distortion. Information are distorted. Sometimes you may share information and um, special units, we call them special units, or unknown people in our countries, we use the word unknown people, they can take the same information, very right information, they distort it and then they, they spread this information. So it, uh, when it goes back to you, it is very wrong information. But then there's a challenge of education. Until now we are speaking here, there are some places whereby people have no access to education. So those people who have no access to education, meaning that we are depriving them the access to information. Because um, using education, they can access information through social media, they can access information from the platform like this. So if they don't have education, means that they have no way they can access this information. But then we have the challenge of government controlling the communication. We have been uh, experiencing, we are in Africa, we have been experiencing violation of this human right. That government is controlling the communication systems. And sometimes, uh, you may wake up in the morning and experience that the social media platforms have been shut down. shut down. So these are the challenge, external challenges. But there are risks out of this. Among the risks is misuse of information. Some people can take the information, they can access, but they may misuse the information. But then there is a problem of fake news. I think even the, uh, we say the detestination of the world, First, this challenge of fake news. So there's a problem of fake news, but then there's a challenge of cyber security. When using um, these platforms of social media, there's a problem of cyber security, like being hacked, especially those uh, social activists, they being hacked, and then the leakage of information. Sometimes you communicate with, with your fellows, you are planning for very good things, but uh, a person from outside, can find a way to get information and leave them. And sometimes in the, in the groups, we are in Africa. So when you're in the group like 15, 30 people, one among you is one among the young people we are saying here that they don't want things to change. So they can screenshot and share the information, then uh, your door is not, it's going to be knocked. <laughs> you're taking for and not less. And then these are the uh, uh, risks facing the access of information that those kinds of communication. But then we are uh, in a drawing and describing the opportunity with uh, potential to scale up. Uh, we, we agreed to establish youth platform in each 55 countries, uh, African Union states, that bring together potential youth from each local administrative level. So through this, we thought about, because it depends on the context of the country, depending on the number of the people you have in your country. So we thought about just averaging it, like in local level having like 20 representatives, in district level having 40 representatives, regional level like 50, 80 representatives. In total of this, in each nation can have like 140 representatives in their countries. Because as my fellow said, of course, using social media is a good thing, but it's not enough. It doesn't suffice the challenge of communication, because now here we, we are here and people like uh, tweeting, sending to the Facebook. I wish sure that all of the people know that uh, what's happening here. All of the people know, uh, especially young people, do, do they know? No. The answer is no, because there are some young people who are interior in the area and they do not access the information from social media. So um, proposing this national 
uh, National Youth Coalition will, will uh, try to solve the challenge, like establishing a youth coalition of 140 youth uh, representatives uh, who are nationally uh, sitting together like annually, and then they report directly to the African Union Commission instead of reporting to the government because the government has their own agendas to bring on, on the table of African Union. So we agreed to have such a platform. So another another here is African Union Commission because in order to establish this loose coalition, which will bring uh, young people from different areas in the country, like one year and then discussing about our campaign and um, sharing those information about African Union and what we are doing, what African Union has proposed, uh, what the problems have been endorsed. Um, this must be uh, agreed by the African Union Commission because we are going to partner with the African Union Commission. And then the government of the country must know, otherwise you may be deprived of the right to, to assemble. So these are the enablers. After that presentation, thank you very much for attending this meeting. Questions? Yes. Okay. My question is related to security. Uh, in your presentation, you have shown us uh, social media. Based on the current data that uh, most Africans, uh, most people in Africa, especially, are affected. Yes. Uh, most most African countries, most African countries, rather than Twitter, Facebook, have more users. And we are seeing, especially as one uh, Ethiopian and as one person who's facing the biggest problem of Facebook, I think we also have to think about not only reaching those people, we also have to think about the security of Facebook. Sex, Facebook. Sorry, sorry. Um, uh, Excuse me. Yeah. Innovation. No, we are not talking about it. We are 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 talking about Enfin, si tout le monde arrête de, de stresser, c'est qui stresse la personne